This is a hypothesis testing problem. In part A, we will be testing hypothesis on uh, population proportions. And in part B, we will be testing a hypothesis about the equality of population means. So here's the information provided. We are having two samples, one of service histories of domestically produced vans. Also, this question is written in the UK, so maybe some UK brands and 500 imported vans. Yeah, so vans not produced in the UK. And of each of these 500, we have 159 domestically produced vans required repairs and 121 imported vans had repairs. Part A. Test the hypothesis that the true proportion of breakdowns to be expected in each of the two population of vans is 0 0.05. So the null hypothesis here is going to be that pi is equal to 0 0.5. Part I. Applying an upper one-sided alternative hypothesis for domestically produced vans. So that's now I. That's for domestically produced vans. We're going to have that pi is larger than 0 0.5. So null hypothesis equal 0 0.5, alternative larger than 0 0.5. So what we need here is a test statistic. When we're testing for pro proportions, we take, we're using a t-test and that t-test is calculated as the sample proportion minus the proportion in the null hypothesis so that's that 0 0.5 we call that pi zero and let me just highlight that that's the proportion which we have in the null hypothesis divided by the standard error of the sample proportion and that is calculated as pi zero times one minus pi zero divided by the sample size that is the variance of the sample proportion as we need the standard error we take the square root of that that is our t statistic and for sufficiently large sample size and 500 would certainly count that we know that this is standard normally distributed so in our case for domestically produced uh, vans, our sample proportion is 159 divided by 500. So that's 0 0.318, 0 0.318, so almost 32% needed repairs. So if we plug this information upon, you see in this formula, we need P 0.318, that is this value here, the sample proportion. But everywhere else, we need pi zero. Pi zero, pi zero, and the sample size n is 500. So if we calculate our sample version of that test statistic, so therefore we use a, a little t, we plug all of these values in, 0 0.318 and 0 0.5 when needed, and 500 for n. What we get is a test statistic of negative 8.139. So now remember, we are testing an upper tailed, a right tailed null uh, hypothesis. So if we do, if we represent this graphically, here's our distribution for our test statistic. Okay, that's the t-test statistic. That is an approximate standard normal distribution. So that is here, centered around zero. Our test statistic is negative. So that's very far in the tail. Negative 8.1. It's really, it would be much, much more in the tail given this picture. Um, but my picture is just a little bit... Um, to center here. So what we are asking, since we are having a upper tail test, we are asking for the probability, if you want to calculate the p-value, what is the probability that we get a test statistic 
as big as negative 8 or larger because or larger comes from the right tail test well graphically that is the size of all of this area and since really the negative 8.1 is way further to the left we know that the size of this is equal but sorry it's not equal to zero the size of that area is indeed equal to one so the p-value is one we haven't actually set any significance level in this question so if you are not given any you have to set it yourself let's set it to an alpha of 0.05 that means the p-value is larger than the alpha 0.05 here we do not reject h naught and that's not really a surprise the alternative hypothesis was that the population proportion is larger than 50 percent our sample proportion is approximately 32 percent so that sample did not deliver strong support to reject h naught in favor of that alternative hypothesis so let's look at part double i part two that's now for import advance, but using a two-sided alternative. So here we will be using H0 is pi equal to 0 0.5, but the alternative hypothesis that pi is unequal to 0 0.5. So now we would also look at values smaller than 0.5 that would also deliver evidence against the null hypothesis whereas in the first part only evidence only sample means that were much larger than 0.5 would deliver evidence to reject the null hypothesis so we're using the same t statistic okay let me just replicate it here again i zero divided by the square root of pi zero times one minus pi zero divided by n and let me use the same color coding pi zero comes from the null hypothesis and p is the sample proportion here the sample proportion is let's write it here p is equal to we got 121 vans requiring repairs and that is a sample proportion, let me consult my notes, of 0.242. So that will deliver, once we plug that value into our t-test and 500 for n, what we get is a t, a sample test statistic of negative 11.53 nine so let me sketch let me sketch perhaps a t distribution that uh, and a normal distribution that has we have a very long tail we will need that and we have our center of the distribution and then we have a very long tail again so this is again a standard normal distribution even if it looks wonky our test statistic is very far in the tail, negative 11.5. Here's our test statistic. The distribution continues here. So now we're having a two-sided test. So if we now want to calculate the p-value for that test statistic, we're now looking in the tail, the tail size on both sides of the distribution. This is going to be the size of this tail over here, but also on the other side, 11.5, also here. Now, if you look up a normal table, and we're not going to do that, you will not find values as big as this because they're very, very far in the tail. So that means the area in each of these tails is actually very close to zero basic it is virtually zero and if we add that together zero plus zero means we still get a p-value of zero for that test now what do we conclude well 
the p-value is smaller than our alpha, which is 0 0.5. In our case, we set it to 0 0.5. So on this occasion, we reject h naught. So the difference was really in the alternative hypothesis because we had a two-tailed test statistic here as opposed to a one-tailed test statistic here. We ended up with our observation very far away from the value in the null hypothesis. But in the first occasion, it was sort of in the wrong tail, the tail we were not looking at. We were only looking in the positive tail because we had a right tail test statistic, but the value ended up in the left tail. For the import advance, we were looking for evidence that the value is in either of the two tails. We had a two-sided test statistic. We did find the evidence, again, very far in the left-hand tail. That then produced very small p-values, so we reject the null hypothesis. So let's move on to part B of this question. So we still have a sample of 500 imported, so that's our n, domestically produced and imported uh, vans. So what we now need is because we are looking at two samples, we'll be using and we will use the two samples to compare whether the, so here's the question, test the hypothesis that domestic and imported vans have equal average fuel consumption. So we will use both of these samples. We call them NI for imported and ND for domestically imported um, produced vans. So let us, we have sample, we have two samples. Let's summarize the sample information. Sample D, domestic, and sample I for imported. So N D is 500 and Ni is equal to 500. So what are we testing? The average fuel consumption. What do we get as sample averages? We get for the domestic sample X bar D, we get 15.3 and that is kilometers measured as kilometers per liters. And for the imported, we get 14.5. Then we have sample standard deviations. SD is equal to 4.1 and SI, that's X by I here, and SI was 5.3. So we are having sample information from both domestically produced and from imported vans. What we are interested in is the following. Now that X, let's call our random variable X, the um, fuel consumption. XD has some sort of distribution, let's call it D, with some mean mu D and some variance sigma squared d. Imported vans have the same. They have a distribution, let's call it xi, that's what the i subscript, and that is distributed as some sort of distribution with mu i and variance i squared. So when you now test the following hypothesis that the two population means are the same, you need to figure out what do I know about the two distributions. There are different types of test statistics. In fact, there's a whole range of different types of test statistics. There's a very restrictive version that requires that both of the populations are normally distributed and the two variances are the same. Sigma square D and sigma square I are the same. We are not giving this, given this information. So if you want to test this null hypothesis under these circumstances against the alternative hypothesis that the population means are different, then we need to use a test statistic which does so with as few assumptions as possible. So without the assumption that the two populations are normally distributed and or that the two variances are identical. So 
one of these test statistics is called the, the Satith weight T test. So let us write down how this Satith weight T test looks like. Uh, let me write it down. Okay. So when we calculate that in the sample, we will calculate X bar D minus X bar I. So the difference in the two sample populations. And really, what we do is we calculate, we subtract that difference from the difference in the hypothesized populations. But this guy here, in our case, because we are assuming that the two are the same, is zero. But you may have different test statistics. And then we divide by the following bit the squared of the domestic sample standard deviation or the sample variance of domestically produced vans divided by the sample size plus s squared of the imported vans divided by ni. Okay, And then that is t distributed where the degrees of freedom, and that is sort of the secret source of the set of rate test is calculated in some sort of complicated way. Excel does that for you if you use the respective Excel version. But a very, very rough guide is that you could use the smaller of the two sample sizes. That would be sort of a very conservative measure. Okay, so it could be the smaller of the two sample sizes. In our case, both sample sizes are 500. So the degrees of freedom, we could think about 500, but if you're having a T distribution with degrees of freedom as large as 500, then this is anyway approximately equal to the standard normal distribution at that sort of sample size. Right? So we are, in fact, in this case, not so worried about the degrees of freedom because we know we will anyway approximate the T distribution at that sort of sample size with the standard normal distribution. So. Let's see. All of that information, let's use CLO for the domestically uh, domestic sample variables, XD, SD squared, and ND is the information which we have here. Okay, or we have SD, but then we can calculate SD squared. And we need information from the imported VAN sample, and we have all of that information here. So from here onwards, it's just a measure of plugging in your values, which we have up here. If you do that, you get a test statistic of 2.6696. So this is our sample value for the t-statistic. Now recall our, our sort of standing decision rule is reject h naught if the p val is smaller than alpha. Again, we're not being given any alpha, so you need to set it yourself. So let's say here we again use an alpha of, um, what shall we use? Let's say actually we use a 1% alpha here. All right, so once we have that, all we are left with to come to a conclusion about this null hypothesis is we need to calculate the p-value. So let's again sketch a distribution. This time we are not so far in the tail. So here's our distribution for our uh, t-test. So in population, that's a capital T. Our sample version is 2. Point, let's put it here, 2. Point seven approximately. Okay, but it's 2.6696. I don't want to overload that graph. So how do we calculate the p-value? We are having oh, the alternative hypothesis was an unequal. Okay, so null hypothesis is that the two population means are equal. The alternative that the two population proportions are unequal. So that's important here because that will help us figure out how to calculate 
the p-value. That means we take our sample test statistic and we check what is the size in the tails. But again, we need to sort of find the mirror value, negative 2.7. We got 2.7, but we would think exactly the same if we had received a value of negative 2.7. So we need to calculate what the size of that red area in that pro in that uh, population is. We can go to the um, standard normal distribution table. You can find what the size of this area is. Okay, um, for instance, up to here, the size of that area is. The size of that green area, which includes that little red area in the in the left, is 0.99. Six, three. That means that this red area here is one minus that, which is uh, oh point oh oh three seven, and that means that the p value is twice that oh point oh three seven two point oh two times that's not very clean let me do that again so it's two times 0 0.0037 so that is 0 0.0074 that is smaller than our significance level of one percent so therefore we reject h naught let's briefly revise what that interpretation of the p-value is the p-value tells us we calculated the p-value assuming that the null hypothesis is correct because only if the null hypothesis is correct that test statistic follows this distribution so under the assumption that the null hypothesis is correct we calculated the probability of finding evidence like the one we did in the sample or more extreme as expressed by a value of 2.7 or more extreme more extreme meaning in both tails if the null hypothesis was true now that probability was 0.0074 less than one percent so if the null hypothesis was true there's a probability of less than one percent that we would find evidence which is as extreme as the one which we got and that falls below our significance level. The probability we allowed ourselves to reject correct null hypothesis. So therefore we reject the null hypothesis on this occasion.